M1 Abrams has been in service in US military for four decades, having been constantly upgraded to meet the standards of its time, and with the latest variant, M1A2 Separate 3, it is among the best tanks in the world. For now. It seems that Abrams has reached the peak of upgradability. Things like inability to produce longer APF SDS to deal with more modern threats like the 14 Armata or the Wait, which has become really problematic with the installation of Thropfy active protection system. The time of Abrams' glory is nearing its end, and there are already several different vehicles that could be replacing it. But before we dive into that, a quick word about my sponsor, War Thunder, which is also a game I quite like playing myself. War Thunder is a military vehicle combat online game. The game is free to play on PC, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 5 and the previous console generations. No purchase necessary, simply download and play. It is also fully cross-platform between all available platforms. Players on PC and both generations of Xbox and PlayStation all play on the same servers. War Thunder recently had an update, New Power, where new, Dagger 6.0 engine was introduced, which brings combat to a whole new level of realism. Naval 3 has been revamped, new battle pass system with seasonal rewards has been introduced, new interactive hangar and much more. Use my link to register and receive a bonus, premium tank, aircraft or ship and a 3-day account boost. The game is completely free, so you can start playing immediately. In October last year, six soldiers from Fort Benning were invited to Ground Vehicle Systems Center to evaluate four different concepts of future tanks, also called Optionally Manned Tanks, or OMT, in order to make further improvements to the concepts this year. Three out of those four have been somewhat declassified, that is, we are allowed to see some basic information about them, I mean, it's even less than basic, and most importantly, we are allowed to see how they look like. The fourth one has not been declassified yet, which might suggest that that one is the one that was preferred by the soldiers. The soldiers were asked about the amount of the crew members they would prefer, and all of them said that four is desirable, but that if an autoloader was implemented, they could operate with the three-man crew. They also discussed about what could a fourth crew member do if an autoloader was implemented, and apparently an idea of a new AV operator came along, like a new AV that would be attached to the tank and then used for reconnaissance, target spotting, etc. But what will actually be the case is unknown, and probably won't be for some time. Now let's analyze the actual vehicles. OMT Variant 1 is very interesting to say the least. It has an unusual design that makes it seem that the turret is on the back of the tank, while if you take a closer look, it's actually pretty much in the center. It just appears to be the case because of the angling and the overall length of the turret. Looking at the data sheet, we can see that it is armed with a 120mm gun, which is undesirable since these vehicles are meant to be used for a long time into the future, and Germany and France are switching to at least a 130mm gun. We can also see that the turret is said to be able to survive medium cannon. Judging by the design and the fact that the model with the thickest turret is marked with kinetic energy projectile survivability, I would say that the turret is meant to survive most common heat and older APF SDS projectiles. The vehicle would also weigh 121,000 pounds, which is roughly 55 tons. Which is pretty good, especially compared to M1A2 Sep 3 with Trophy, which comes close to 70 tons. This concept, while having the smallest gun caliber out of all three, for some reason has the lowest amount of ammunition. In total, it would have 28 pieces of 120mm ammunition, out of which 14 would be APF SDS, 10 heat, and 4 canister projectiles. This really doesn't make any sense to me. US has developed a new advanced multi purpose projectile that pretty much combined canister, heat and high explosive ammunition into one. It can penetrate targets with low armor and then explode like APHE, it can air burst above the target which is excellent against infantry, especially on great distance since canister shells have very limited range, and it can explode on impact like regular HE projectile. Why use heat and canister as two different projectiles is beyond me especially since heat is pretty much useless against modern tanks, 
and is primarily used to deal with low armored vehicles, against which AMP would work even better. Now, the design of the turret seems to follow the design of the Striker MGS, where the gunner and the commander are below the external turret's appearance, but are still technically in it. This can be concluded by the fact that the vehicle has vision blocks on at least one side. This means that in case the turret is penetrated, the crew is in a lower risk of getting killed or injured, and it must be done because of the actual turret's armor. Of course, this means that the tank features an autoloader, and it would make sense because of the limited space in the turret, and the fact that there is no bore evacuator on the gun. I mean, it could be under the armored cover, but it probably isn't. The concept features a remotely operated machine gun with the ATV, and this appears to be the main gun sight. The hull sides are covered in what appears to be either ERA or NERA add-ons. The tank has two sets of vision blocks on the hull. This might suggest that either gunner or commander are sitting next to the driver in the hull. Either of the two is possible, since the higher position of the turret would give the commander a better overlook, but it limits the view of the right side because of the main gun. Therefore, I'd rather say the commander could be in the hull, but that's just me guessing. Sadly, we don't get a look on the other side of the turret to see if there could actually be a crew member on the right side. If you took a closer look at the turret, you can see it has some sort of cover, which appears to be ERA. If we consider that the composite armor is covering the area until ERA, then it's a decent cover for the side, but I'm more concerned about the effectiveness of the ERA than the actual coverage. But it's just a concept, I can't judge it about that. All tanks are said to have active protection systems and laser warning receivers, which would include this tank as well. These things appear to be raiders for an active protection system, but I couldn't identify the launchers, which means they can also be laser warning receivers, or I could be completely wrong and what I think are smoke discharges are actually some specific type of hard kill launchers, or they haven't made active protection system on the concepts because they haven't decided on which one to use. We possibly won't know until they reveal more information, if they do. As for the mobility, absolutely nothing was disclosed about any of the four variants, so we have nothing to go on with that. That is pretty much it for this concept, let's move to the next one. OMT variant 2 is very similar to the OMT variant 1, but with some key differences. The key difference is the better gun. The actual caliber of the gun is not disclosed, but it is marked as high energy and large caliber, which would suggest at least the 130mm Rhine Metal gun or even a 140mm gun that US was developing in the past. For that, an autoloader is more than certain. This one weighs more than the first variant, weighing 132,000 pounds or 60 metric tons. This one, although sporting a bigger gun, has more ammunition, 36 in total, out of which 6 are not in the ready rack, or rather the autoloader. And again, the mention of heat and canister is confusing. The protection of the turret is also rated against medium cannons. Both the turret and the hull sides appear to be covered in M32 Arat 2 explosive reactive armor, present in Tusk 2 kit for Abrams. But I couldn't exactly figure out if the M19 Arat 1 blocks are present from the available photographs. The crew layout appears to be the same, judging by the locations of the vision blocks. The tank also has the radars or the laser warning receivers. Overall, this one appears to be much better than the first variant. The vehicle appears to be more spacious and the armor design appears better, but since I don't know what exact areas are covered with composite armor, I can't tell you which one has better protection. And now we move to the last declassified variant, number 3. OMT variant 3 went for a more traditional design with a well-protected turret with some crew members inside, but some design choices are very confusing. It apparently has the same gun as the second variant, which would be a more powerful weapon, with the same amount of ammunition. Now, the main gun sight appears to be on the right side, just like on the Abrams, but unless they are planning for someone to manually load the 50kg heavy projectiles, the distribution of the vision blocks doesn't make sense. NATO tanks usually have commanders sitting behind the gunner, which in this instance would make sense if the loader was on the other side. Commander would have better view because all around vision blocks are located higher than the ones on the left, but if that is not the case and there are two crew members in the turret, then the commander would be sitting on the left. 
since it would make sense for the gunner to sit right behind the main gun sight. If that is the case, then the commander view would be obscured by the vision blocks on the right, and if the gunner is sitting on the left, and commander on the right, then they have to make an unnecessarily complicated connection to the main gun sight. Again, this is all unless a person would be loading the incredibly heavy projectiles manually, which is most likely not the case, the lack of a bore evacuator also supports that theory. Also, if you don't know, bore evacuator extracts the fumes out of the gun after firing, making it much easier for the crew. In case of an autoloader there would be no need, since the breach can be isolated from the crew and thus the fumes would not enter the crew compartment. And two hatches on the hull? I don't understand why this would be the case for this vehicle, unless they actually implemented the previously mentioned UAV operator, but that is hardly the case since it's said that that idea came up from the discussion where these concepts were shown. The sides are definitely covered in composite armor, Haddon. The remote HMG is connected to the CATV just like on the second variant. And it also has the radars or the laser warning receivers. Now, I have to say I'm not a fan of the armor design of this vehicle. The composite armor on the turret has sort of a conical shape. This means that if a projectile strikes an area near the turret ring or close to the roof, it will have an easier time penetrating than if it hits the center. And don't worry, modern projectiles have no trouble penetrating very steep angles. And the hull armor design appears to have the worst angling of all variants, which makes it much easier for projectiles to go through. It certainly has better armor according to the datasheet, but it also matters on how much of the tank is covered in that armor. It is also the heaviest of three, weighing 143,000 pounds, or rather 65 metric tons, which is pretty much the weight of previous Abrams variant, M182 SEP V2, which is really undesirable. Don't forget to check out War Thunder. War Thunder recently had a big update where they introduced a new engine, battle pass, more modern vehicles and much more. If you played the game before, now might be the time to give it a try again. And if you haven't, use the link in the description to register and get a premium vehicle and a 3-day account boost and start playing for free. Out of all three, in my personal opinion, second variant is the best. It has a new gun, decent protection, at least the design, is light enough and it looks pretty good. I think that you can tell that my least favorite is the third variant. There are many flaws in its design, even though the armor is rated the best, the armor design leaves a lot to be desired, and considering the fact that it weighs 65 tons, all upgradability is thrown out of the window, because if you try to upgrade the protection, it will reach the weight of a tank that already has a problem that you're trying to fix. And if you don't understand, the issue of weight is not the issue of the vehicle itself, it makes it hard to transport the vehicle by train, on water and even to cross bridges. That is why the lighter the vehicle is, the better, and if you combine a medium armor with good active protection system, you will get the best out of both worlds. That would be all, if you like my content you can consider supporting me on Patreon, and if you can't, leave a like on the video or subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.